Today we're going to talk about the problems encountered when viewing open access simply through the prism of policy compliance. We're going to present you with a few statistics which made us wonder whether institutions may in the future be able to assess their academic engagement with OA through a sliding scale of openness. So while the roots of OA go back further than this, the 2002 Budapest Open Access Initiative provided a succinct outline of the objectives of OA. This clear message was then picked up by a variety of groups, from university librarians to research planning departments to funding bodies. As a result of this fantastic level of adoption, we now exist in a very complex policy terrain, with institutional policies on OA existing alongside those of specific funders. This breadth of policies has therefore helped with the rapid open dissemination of research papers. I think this is particularly true in the UK. So, no problem then. OA has become an integral part of research policy. <coughs> However, the complexity of the OA environment might be creating inadvertent barriers to broader open scholarship. We wonder whether the focus on institutional compliance may be duplicating effort as OA is seen only through internal systems. The risk is that academics start to see OA as merely a tick box exercise rather than the initial step towards broader public engagement. Our worry is that a heavy focus on institutional compliance may fail to capture scholarly engagement with OA beyond internal systems. This may simultaneously create anxiety amongst staff supporting open scholarship. As Jim McCalco from OCLC recently put it, the focus on institutional compliance may lead library staff to feel as though they are simply instruments of compliance. Our research has highlighted that the frag fragmentary network of research systems out there does provide insight into the collaborative range of OA activities. However, by viewing OA purely through localised systems, it's a bit like looking through a telescope the wrong way round. We only see things through a very narrow focus, as hopefully illustrated here. The features of open dissemination are now appearing earlier in the published record. Different versions of an output might appear in various forms across the web. Each version may exhibit different properties of openness. What's required is the ability to aggregate open activities and then scale them back down to an institutional level. However, UK institutions are currently operating the other way around, viewing open access through only a single institutional system. This may then create a duplication of effort by academics and layers of bureaucracy that prevent us from understanding wider engagement with open practices. Our inability to track academic activity across this range of systems may be weakening our policies. The 101 Innovations Project shows the breadth of new dissemination platforms out there. This is what modern scholarship looks like. But these practices, practices are not always recognised, nor necessarily captured in local systems. A number of aggregate and classification services around open access already exist. So we ran our publications record through just a few of these, and we found a much better sense of the true scale of open access and the engagement by Brunel academics. We found our visibility more than tripled through this approach. Core showed us that just one in three of our papers were to be found in our repository. The majority are widely discoverable in other equally suitable repositories. And this data verifies for us anecdotally what we already know to be happening, namely that many of our academics are already highly engaged with open practices. Through CORE, we are able to see Brunel's research as a global collaboration. But of course, these global insights are not reflected in territorial policies. Open access is a global movement, but with a lack of available data, how can we assess models and approaches to see the best way forward? The broader cultural revolution is being overlooked because policy compliance focuses attention institutionally. And the lack of collectivism for global open access data is obscuring our cultural transition toward open and so obstructing local services that are supposed to be supporting communities through this change. 
Looking at other web services produced a clearer picture into the state of open through Brunel. So we significantly increased the volume of open access papers than we previously identified. We found about 40% of papers that did not take an available green open access option. The publishing trends of our researchers have changed dramatically. This graph more clearly shows the shift toward gold, particularly in the last five years. What's interesting about this growth is it does not appear to have deterred our scholars from the continued usage of repositories. The lack of available data makes institutional services arbiters of compliance armed with sticks. The trouble with bludgeoning compliance through policy is the collateral damage that might hit researchers that we've already taken the time to win to the movement. What we need is smarter tools that can incentivise the cultural change and enable a proper dialogue between users and services. Our data indicates there is far more gold and green publishing taking place outside the visibility of our request-driven services. But what we're having to do in supporting compliance is impose workflows that don't recognise a natural and evolving practice often being led by scholars themselves. At our Open Access Conference uh, last year, Cameron Nalen pointed out that OA has sometimes felt like libraries chucking books and papers over a wall and hoping the public will come along and pick them up. The duplication of effort we're currently enforcing serves only to take time from the proper public engagement that the movement is supposed to underpin. To be effective, we need much better access to data about the manifestations of open works that relate to our institution. How else can local services properly engage, guide and incentivise our researchers? And how will the scholarly community know when we're, we're, sorry, when we're within sight of our destination? That's the end. Thank you very much. Thank you.